do like our intro honestly shout out nick for putting that together it's freaking awesome yeah although i i do have to admit there is slightly more pressure associated with it you think because, well because like previously we would just kind of like be talking and then at some and then the point, episode would happen <laughs> yeah, like there wasn't like an official starting point to it yeah and yeah. now there's like a countdown to start mm -hmm. and it it, it affects the content of the show in no way whatsoever, and yet it causes me yeah. like, slightly more stress. I get what you're saying, but with that out of the way, welcome, friends. I hope you're ready to fight. Uh, do we even want to make an attempt to sync up our audio and make Nick's life easier? Because that was a disaster last week. I'm pretty sure we're supposed to do that before we start. <laughs> I have mine running for so long before... Well, but the... No, that wouldn't make any sense. Yes, because we have the before recorded. I suppose. Because why would you want to have every podcast episode with us doing like a clap or something? That would be weird. I figured we could make it funny, but you're actually so right. And perhaps I am just stupid. <laughs> I don't know. I can actually. And also, I already cracked open my cold one. So <laughs> we are supposed to do it before we start the actual episode. right? Sorry, Nick. Um, but for anyone who uh, is going to be, like, only listening to this after it comes out, I'm currently test driving some new color contacts, which is fun. They're red. So I look kind of demonic. I can't see them very well, partially because you're smaller than usual, um, and partially because there's a glare. Can you lower your glasses for a moment? Because that's what's causing the issue. There we go. Now I can really see them. Nice. <laughs> anyway. So, so just got them for funsies? What the hell? I did just get them for funsies. I Okay, so I sort of both did and didn't. Because I wanted black uh, sclera lenses, which I also did get. I'm going to give myself a little... I just got these here today. I'm going to give myself a little more... T like. I need to give myself a bigger window before I try on full yeah. sclera blackout lenses for the first it. time. Yeah. I'm a little intimidated by those. But um, so I was gonna get those, and the website that I get them from that you got all of your like cosplay contacts from as well, they were doing like a buy one, get one free. And I was gonna get the sclera lenses anyway. And those ones are kind of expensive because they're bigger. Um, and I was like, you know, if if we're tossing them in anyway, yeah, red seems cool. Like fun, freaky, fits my whole vibe. And then I was like, oh, you know what would be great? If I wore those with Mothman. Because I'm going to have, like, the red glowing eyes as, like, part of the, like, cost, like the, the headpiece that I'm making for the cosplay. But if I have to, like, flip that up for any reason, I'm still probably going to have, like, a little bit of makeup on or whatever. So it'll, it'll, it worked out is what I'm saying. <laughs> I found a use for them as I was, like, adding them to my cart mentally. I was like, oh, yeah, like, I was going to get these anyway, but that's perfect. That was what I assumed you had gotten them for, actually. Because I'm like, well, you're going to have red eyes in, like, a week and a half, just not mm -hmm. your actual eyes. So why not make your actual eyes also red? Yeah, and also, 
that I they're just fun. Honestly, I really like sometimes I just wear like the the emeritus eye, the plain white contact just in my left eye. Sometimes I just wear that to work. Like it's fun. It hurts nobody. It's a vibe. What I, what I really want you to do is the glowing red eyes that you have for your Mothman costume. Mm -hmm. I want you to be able to like pull your thing up and then have another set of those like they're your actual eyes. That would be hilarious, but unfortunately I would not be able to see. It's worth it. Aren't you the one who's always saying you have to suffer for your Actually, art? Actually, yeah, no, you're so right. I need to suffer for my art. <laughs> I need you to suffer for my entirely art. Entirely blinded. I'm here for it. Actually, hmm. Let me see, because I join yes i still can That's use it ah wonderful i forgot about our little vibe check thing which is essentially what we were doing i forgot that i was the per that i am the person who can also do things because we have been added to like the network although i i am i've mentioned this like briefly offhandedly on the pod before but i really think we should record some like specific little sounds to play see i think I think Nick put it in the network WhatsApp like two days ago. He came up with something for the worst thing. Yeah, so there, for the worst thing, yeah. Although I don't I don't know if there was a video counterpart to go with that in the way that there is with like the um like the Big Dumb Monsters intro or the regrettable reviews intro. I thought that could be kind of fun. So it, what I'm saying is that's not loaded for tonight, even though that's a thing we're working on. Mm -hmm. So there's that. But um yeah, good. What's up? How's life? I honestly don't remember if I've ranted about this on the pod before. I probably have. I love a rant. I am all. I am already so sad. Hit me with it, bestie. It's, and it's like it's not even an important thing. It is a very small thing, but something that nonetheless makes me very upset. On I don't want to say on a regular basis because I don't encounter it that often. Why? In this, the year of our Lord, 2024, are we still packing Lord. things in styrofoam? Why? No, you've never ranted to me about styrofoam before. I hate styrofoam so, so much. Okay, I'm going to so stop you for one second. <laughs> Excellent quote. I'm going to stop you for one second. I have several, re I think... I can think of several reasons why this would be the case for you. One, it's either a sensory thing with the way that it sounds, or two, that it gets everywhere in little particles and sticks to you with static electricity. Nailed it on the second one there. I, I know my friends well. If, on the list of things in this world that I hate, you know, if we're setting aside the really obvious things like war and poverty and all that, right? And just one like, other really obvious thing that we allude to but never say. Yes. <laughs> but like aside from things that like really matter. If you give us five hundred dollars on Patreon, you will know the secret. <laughs> um, but it, it's probably unless there's some other thing that I can't think of at the moment, styrofoam's got to be like top of that list. Because yeah, I mean, surely the sound that it makes is horrific. And if anybody says otherwise, they are lying, or there's something horribly wrong with them. The sound of styrofoam okay. rubbing on styrofoam. Oh. Yeah, no, it's bad. I, I definitely agree. Like whenever I have to pull something out of a package and it makes that noise, it, it's like it doesn't necessarily send me into a blind rage, but it's not pleasant. Actually, I, I should also pull a blind a rage, a seeming rage, but <laughs> a rage nonetheless. But yeah, so it's it's the rubbing together thing. But like, why are we still packing furniture in styrofoam? Like, I don't, it's not biodegradable. What it's furniture did you order? I got a new stand for my record player. Nice. Also, and is that, are, the, are those new curtain, new curtains? Uh, half of a new curtain. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, so. I'm not totally losing it. No, I'm trying to decide if they're, they're supposed to be blackout curtains, and I'm trying to decide if they work well enough before I put up the other one, and I got to hem them anyway. But yeah, I, um, I'm very upset that this record player came packed in styrofoam because the second I opened that box, there were bits of it everywhere. Like it came pre-mauled by a bear. 
and of course in static they stick to everything and that alone is one of my biggest pet peeves but it's worse when you have cats oh god yeah and especially one that will try to eat anything that fits in her mouth so i'm like constantly on the alert mm -hmm. <laughs> oh is that a tiny piece is that a tiny piece where is she where yeah. is she um that's the so, thing that i've been running into frequently with him because i do like because when i have to do like craft stuff on the floor like there'll be like little bits of eva foam or like little mm -hmm. fabric scraps and i'm like get away from it mm -hmm. also my son is just terminally stupid which you've experienced yeah. firsthand nix will eat the styrofoam if i'm not very vigilant about it and luna likes to climb on top of everything so the styrofoam bits just stick in her fluffy fur and so i have to constantly the duster. And pick the things out and um but yeah chris absolutely the it's very much like glitter in that there we go. I will probably be finding these bits of styrofoam for like a week. I remember one time when I still had my laptop before I switched to my desktop PC. I remember I came to your apartment and I like hung out for the weekend and I went home and I opened up my laptop and a tuft of Bella's fur just wafted out. It's like, all right, thank you. Aww, thank you for like a little souvenir. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I, I can complain about styrofoam for literal hours. Like, I could talk nonstop about how much I hate it and various experiences I've had with it. But this is, it's just very fresh and very raw because I just finished putting together the sand. I feel that. Yeah. I really do feel that. And I immediately. I'm doing a lot of crafting recently so i have been in a similar situation of like leave the little bits of foam alone i can't stop the process to pick up after myself mm -hmm. constantly or the process is going to take forever mm -hmm. yeah although i do have a really stupid conspiracy theory that I, knew they, I love conspiracy theories they pack it in styrofoam because they know how annoying the styrofoam is and they know that you'll want to get rid of it as quickly as possible. So you throw away the packing materials just to get rid of it, but then you don't have the box anymore, so you can't return it. See, that's low stakes enough to be very plausible, in yeah. my humble opinion. Like, honestly, I buy that. I really do. Yeah. Like, if they use that the molded cardboard, like a lot of places do these days, uh -huh. that's super easy to keep a hold of and repack. This would have been impossible to repack. Yeah. Uh, and no, honestly, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna incorporate that into my worldview. Yeah, I, I immediately took it all to the the dumpster. I was like, I have to get this out of my home. I have to free myself from the tyranny of tiny bits of styrofoam. And like, well, very, very styrofoam. understandable. Yeah, I hate styrofoam with a burning passion. Can't say and I blame my, you. And you know what? It's not just my personal reasons. Again, terrible for the environment. So why are we still doing it? Yeah, honestly, you're not wrong in I hate at it. all. I hate so, it. Name any packing I'm fully on your side here, Bestie. There is no worse packing material. I'm going to say hard agree. Yeah. Um, Bestie, it's so over. I know. It's so fucking over. We have the release date for the final season of What We Do in the Shadows. It is October 21st, 2024. So that's when the streams are going to start. I'm not sure what day of the week it is, but trust trust us, we will be talking about this as it airs. That's going to be our third year of doing shadow streams as the show airs and it's going to be the last one it is so fucking over that's a monday okay yeah that'll work out perfectly because we'll we watch the episode and then we'll have like two a couple days to percolate think about it and then talk about it. but yeah it's so fucking over guys works out nicely too that we still get three weeks of spooky season before that so we can still do three like spooky movies yes yes that will be fun and also probably we could like i'm sure we could work in like another group like bonus stream on a different day if we want to do that many 
horror movies during October. We'll figure it out. But yeah. yeah. So consider that an early stream announcement. First of all, we will absolutely be uh, continuing our tradition of shadow streams as the final season is airing. So, you know, fear not. But God, what the fuck am I going to do? That's my fucking family. You know what? You'll find a new one. I probably will, but I just, you know, when you're in the middle of the hyperfixation and you can't picture life without it, or like without new content from, of the hyperfixation, whatever that is. Yeah. What the fuck, man? But I, I help myself feel better by thinking about like, man, what are all the things yet to come? Like there was a time this in your life where true. you never heard of Ghost. And, and now about- I have it tattooed on me forever. But think about, like, if you knew that was in your future at some point, how excited you'd be. There's probably stuff like that. that I'm sure there out. is, which is why I'm, one in particular, now that I know that I actually really fuck with metal music, which is why I'm always looking for, like, new upcoming stuff. Like, as soon as I hear, like, oh, some little, like, here's this small band, and they're also doing the mask thing. I'm like, don't mind if I fucking do. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the end of a fucking era. Yeah, I know we spent some time at the end of the last season, like, speculating about the final season, but I'm just, um, <sighs> concerned. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, they've, they've given themselves, it's gonna be, like, 11 episodes, though. We're, on the first, uh, or, yeah, 11, I think, because on the first night, we're getting three. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a lot. But like exciting, but but then it's over that much more quickly. So yes, but I think they're also doing the same thing with the finale, where it's it's either two or three for the finale as well. That so I guess I mean yeah, or but like I think they're all they're like giving themselves. It's either eleven or twelve. I can't remember, but like. They're giving themselves more time in the world to wrap things up a little bit, I guess. So like that gives me a little bit of hope. But yeah, they have a they have a lot of threads to mm-hmm. to tie off. So Ooh, this is gonna be interesting. But yeah, oh man. I can't fucking believe it. Like I knew it was coming, obviously. And I was like, oh yeah, like that's the final season. But now they've actually announced it, I'm like Shit, dog. <laughs> End of an era, truly. Ooh. Mm? Oh, I was ooing for this con. <laughs> I. Listen. Listen, listen, listen. I. I hope. Please give it to me. Give me my fucking family. But yeah, that was... I saw that and I was just like, wow. It's been a, it's been a fucking ride. And it's yeah. not quite over yet, but damn. Also, just the fact that that's been the funniest fucking thing on, like, primetime TV for a while now. Like, somebody better step up. Yeah. In my humble opinion. Man, it seems like not so long ago you were saying, oh, I don't want to start watching it because I know once I do, I'll be, like, fixated on it. And here we are. Your prophetic vision there. Uh, Yeah. I know myself too well in some cases, and I know what things are going to be, like, crack to me and make me so much more insufferable. And I was right. Mm -hmm. Fucking shocker. But... In other news, uh, we're getting two new ghost music videos, which is very exciting for me. One of them premiered this morning, which I technically already saw because it was a segment from right here, right now, from the movie. But the one that's premiering tomorrow morning is a a new animated music video for the song that was released with the movie The Future is a Foreign Land. And I'm really fucking excited for that because that, like, that I know nothing about. So insane woman hours so that's exciting last friday 
Los Campesinos released a new album. No first, shit. Yeah, their first in seven years. We had there you go. Years. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I pre-ordered it, like, from the band's website. So I don't have it yet because mm. they're in Wales. Yeah. Uh, but I got I it from just, them. Hmm? Yeah, I think I just got the email that, because, of course, I ordered the Right Here, Right Now. Like, they were releasing a live album from that those shows. Um, I think I got the notification that that shipped, like, a day ago. So I don't know when I will get my grubby little hands on that. Yeah, I got an email with the tracking number, but every time I look up the number, it says not found. So I don't know, like a week ago. But interesting. Yeah, but it, it came out and uh, because I had pre-ordered and my pre-order comes with like a T-shirt and an actual cassette of the album for some reason. Those are coming back as like a collector's item. I have a cassette of Phantom Mime. Mm. Yeah, but I, it came with several fun things. I also bought a CD that all of them signed. I wanted the vinyl, but they sold out of the vinyl. I love that. Yeah. But anyway, so because I had pre-ordered, they had like special events last week for people that pre-ordered. Nice. And I got to like watch their new documentary live. Uh, That's so last fun. Wednesday. And then there was a listening party on Thursday to listen to the whole album through. Oh my God, I love it. And I have just been just nonstop list it, it is perfect like probably their best album me when the future is a foreign land dropped as soon as that song was available i was like i need this directly into my veins yeah every single song on it is just like i i don't know how many times i've listened to it at this point oh just no like, i feel that some <laughs> there's a post i've seen that's just one of the most relatable like sentences or set of sentences I've ever heard. Listening to it isn't enough. I need to fuck the song. Yeah. Well, I... <laughs> like, sometimes that's how it be. I had my family reunion over the weekend, and it was about a four-hour drive Oh, away. yeah. Do you have any stories from that? Or just any updates? Because I feel like you've had an update every other time that it's come up on the podcast. I mean, there are stories but i don't know how interesting they are um, i mean this is mandatory fun for us fuck the audience <laughs> um well maybe here in a second but i just want to say i had this four hour drive there four hour drive back i listened to the album non-stop the whole time so valid but the way there probably Three out of those four hours, I was listening to one song on repeat. <laughs> Me with the future is a foreign land. <laughs> one song for three straight hours. <laughs> We've all been there. Listening to it isn't enough. I need to fuck the song. It's so, it's so freaking good. Oh my God. It's so good. Um, yeah, Los Campesinos people, never heard of them, check it out. Their name is Spanish. There's no reason for that. It has nothing to do with them as a it's band. It's just about vibes, and that's okay. Yeah, it means the peasants in Spanish for for no reason. But um, the the they used to refer to themselves as punk influenced Welsh indie pop, uh, but they evolved over time, and now they refer to themselves as the UK's first and only emo band. I love that. <laughs> also, sorry, Hey Boots. I saw your message. Not fuck you. <laughs> Oh, that's what it was. I felt bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, I man, my family reunions are there's something. Do tell. I am all ears. Well, I mean, you're aware that my mom is one of 14 kids. That's too many, uh, yes. Yeah, it is it is a lot. She's 13 out of 14. And I mean, a lot of her siblings have passed away at this point. But <sighs> She is, again, 13 out of 14, so that means that most of her siblings are older. Mm -hmm. So there are her siblings' kids and their kids and their kids. Jesus Christ. And these family reunions are just massive. Like, we have, on more than one occasion, worn name tags. But so certainly, 
Yeah, but certainly, like, most people don't know the names of anybody under the age of, like, 25. Sure. Because it's like, wait, who are those kids? Are they actually related to us yet? It's like, oh, yeah, that's so-and-so's kids, kids. And it's like, okay, why not? Sure, I guess. Yeah, it's just it's just a massive freaking family, you know? Um, Understand. I know most of my first cousins, not all of them. Some of them I've literally never met. Um, but we know each other for the most part. But, yeah, mm-hmm. there was a lot of um, laughing so hard that we cried, which is is good. I um, love that for you. We continue our family tradition of writing a vaguely threatening note while drunk to slip under my cousin Christie's hotel room door. Wait, this is the first time hearing of this. Please explain. <laughs> um, it's... Wait, hold on. My son is going for his box. <laughs> yes, I see. You comfy? You gonna hang out? Yeah. Oh, bath in the box. Okay. I'll leave him to that. Continue. I would like to hear more about this threatening note situation. It started um, five years ago when we were at a family reunion in the middle of nowhere, Indiana, in the hotel there. There's literally one hotel, like within, I don't know how many miles, many miles, and it's surrounded by cornfields. So if you look out your window, you just see giving children of the corn. Yeah. I mean, and when I say you look out and see corn, I'm not like, oh, there's corn off in the distance. It's like five feet from your window. <laughs> so it's giving children of the corn. Yeah. Right. So that that was of course what all the, the jokes were, right? Oh, uh, they're the children of the corn, they're gonna get you, right? As well and as well. um we really I have two cousins in particular that the three of us tend to like pick on each other a lot. <laughs> And, you know, just, but my cousin Christy is one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. And it's really fun to try to play pranks on her. Um, And so five years ago, a couple of us got drunk and just wrote this letter with various colored crayons on a sheet of paper using like our left hands. So it didn't look like our handwriting, like she could tell. We drew a picture of what was supposed to be a really scary face, but it looked very silly. So I wrote, this looks silly, but it's super serious. Dun, dun, dun. Incredible. (laughs) And uh, we slipped it under her door. And uh, it was very funny. And so we're like, let's do that again. And we did. And now it's just a thing. Yeah. And, And this time we wrote it on a piece of a beer box that my cousins like it. work for us. And uh, it was much more elaborate in detail this time. We name dropped a couple people. Nice, um, nice. Had nothing to do with anything, just to kind of, you know, throw, throw suspicion on them. And the next morning, oh, I had one of my cousins who had nothing to do with the actual note. I had her deliver it under the door. Amazing. And so the next morning I get up, I go down to hotel breakfast and probably at least 20 heads turn toward me. <laughs> and my cousin do do? The, sign, the sign, the note. My cousin just looks at me and goes, <laughs> and I'm like, what, what is that? And so I just played it off. Like I had no idea what it was. Never admit, just never admit to anything. Right. Then, yeah, yeah you gotta, that looks like well, that's the thing. That's why you got to involve someone who wasn't normally involved. Get as many fingerprints on it as possible. Confuse the cops. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I That's why I had one of my cousins who had nothing to do with the note deliver it because she was present at the time and she needed to be implicated in the crime. Incredible. Right? Um, so then we get the bright idea while we're at breakfast to leave a note under the door of the cousin who delivered the first note saying, I know what you did. <laughs> which we wrote on the back of a paper plate with a green highlighter. The plot thickens. Yeah. Always drag so, down an accomplice indeed. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so we wrote, like, I know what you did. Love, Christy. <laughs> Just, I love it. That's fantastic. I, yeah. I, I had to do a little figuring to find out this cousin's hotel room, and I waited until she and her kids were all downstairs. I forgot that her boyfriend was still in the room and I think he saw me. 
because the paper plate doesn't really fit under a door very well. It's not flat. It's what was oh, just no. Well, let's, so, hope, let's hope he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> where would you sit? Where would you rank yourself among party people in your family? Because frankly, a lot of your family sounds like party people. I told you about our last reunion when we got kicked off the hotel patio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but again, you were involved in that. So where do you fall on this sliding scale? I mean, uh, are we looking at this as like a 1 to 10 scale? I guess. With like 1 being the people that go to bed at 9 p.m.? <laughs> yeah, 1 being the ultimate square, 10 being the hangover. I'm pretty much always one of the last ones. But I'm also just nocturnal, so there's that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I learned my lesson after the last one. I didn't drink nearly as much this time. <laughs> That's probably smart, considering I I what you told me. Yeah, probably like a nine. Hell yeah, rock and roll. But yeah, there's definitely people who drink more than I do, and we always have at least a couple who really overdo it. Um, and I think I sent you a picture of that beer that I got. Yes, the... The slime, whatever. Lacto cooler. Yeah. It's a beer, Voodoo Brewing Company. They made a beer that's supposed to taste like the Ecto Cooler High C <laughs> that they released when the original Ghostbusters came out. To me, it tastes like a green apple warhead. It's like super duper sour. But man, was that bringing me Ooh. some joy. Yeah. I am fascinated. What a time to be alive. Um, well, that's fun. I do have our, uh, pulling this up on my phone here, our asshole of the week. Come on. Oh, I've, I don't have a banner for that. Shouldn't sure have thought about that. God damn it. Oh, well. Um, Opportunity. But, and even though I looked for this literally like 20 minutes before we started the podcast, I still could not find one that had not already been judged. So, we're going to set that aside as we always do. No, just take me to the app. Make my life easier. God damn it. Okay. So this is actually, would I be the asshole? So would I be the asshole if I asked my IT friend to, quote, speed it up with repairing my PC? Uh, the post reads thusly. I'll keep it brief. A few weeks ago, my gaming PC I built failed. I thought there was a Windows error, and I didn't have my original Windows software to install. My IT friend has it. It's a purchased legal and legit copy. Anyway, I sent my PC to him to get Windows reinstalled, but it turned out there was actually a BIOS failure. Not sure what that is. I am not that technologically literate. Yeah. My friend said he would fix it, and I felt really grateful that he would just do that instead of telling me to go see someone else. He said he has to rebuild the PC, which I was fine with, and he said it would take him a few days. I offered him quite a bit of money for his troubles, but he turned down the offer. Anyway, a few days have passed, actually about two weeks, and I need my PC back. I use it for my side business as well, and I'm losing out on work. I also use it to work from home sometimes. I'm getting to the point where I'm quite behind and really need it back, but I feel like I'd be a spoiled brat telling him I really need it back soon. What should I do? I don't want him to think I'm being impatient. I just genuinely need my PC back, and I don't have a suitable computer to help in the meantime. I don't think you'd be the asshole. No, I I mean, when I read just the subject, what, which is... Would I be the asshole if I asked my IT friend to speed it up with repairing my PC? Mm -hmm. Like, that alone... I was like, yeah. Asshole-ish, you know? But then when you actually get into it, like... Yeah, I mean, if he waited two whole weeks and didn't say anything, like, that's... Yeah. I think yeah, that's I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you would be in the wrong at all to be like, Hi, can I please have this back soon? I really need it. Yeah, especially if it... Like, can you imagine being without a computer for two weeks? Like, no, it sounds like this, this guy has, like, his work computer. Mm -hmm. um, although, I don't know why I was assuming mail. I didn't actually say. Apologies. Um, oh, I didn't mean to close that. <laughs> um, but, nope, lost my train of thought. He's actually close to finish. No, because, like, his friend is technically doing him a favor repairing it for free. But also, like, 
does. This guy does like someone else said it. He does need it for work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, like, saying, but don't be a dick about it. Obviously. It seems like they have a work computer to at least be able to do things there. But yeah, so it seems like they wouldn't be able to work from home at all, mm -hmm. or you know whatever the side business is. They're not able to do that, so they're losing money essentially. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I think it it makes total sense to ask as about long it. as you're not a dick yeah and you know you don't have to say speed it up you can just simply say hey i'm checking in on this yeah this is the situation that i'm in and i really need it back you mm -hmm. don't have to say speed it up you just be like yeah no and i mean i'm sure that was just like to keep it short for like the title purposes or whatever but as long yeah. as you're nice about it yeah so and waiting two weeks to ask about the computer that you need yeah, honestly, I would have, I probably would have asked a little sooner if oh, I, like, again, if I did really need that. For but sure. the edit is, um, I called and asked and he apologized. He said he was busy with work, but promised me it'll be done Monday. So everything works out in the end. And the, um, the verdict of Reddit was no assholes here. Yeah. Which, yeah. Yeah, I... I'm surprised. Like, I wonder what happened to the computer from before that. Yeah. Because you would think he would have a backup computer, like, you know, an old one that he could use. I well, I mean, see, here's the thing. As a person who, within the last, like, five years, pivoted from having a laptop to having a desktop PC, I, like, there, I have no before now. My old laptop is wiped. It's my parents use it to watch movies on, like, vacation sometimes. And I mean, like, I have external hard drives with, like, important stuff backed up there, but I can't do anything with it if I, like, was suddenly without my actual, like, computer and monitors. But you could, like, be like, hey, can I take my laptop back and use it while I'm waiting on this? Yeah, yeah. You know, because I... I <laughs> one of the things on my list is to recycle old laptops, because I just let them pile up. <laughs> I've never had a desktop. I've only done laptops, and I just replace them periodically. <laughs> I just I have a literal stack of them, which is kind of fun. It's like a little uh, history of electronics because you can see. Yeah, them. there you go. Because yes, they are in chronological order in the stack. Well, duh. Which makes sense because the older ones are the heavier, bulkier ones, so they go on the bottom. Exactly. Damn, amazing. <laughs> Maybe recycle some of those. Yeah. It's it's on my list. I don't know why I haven't. I think I'm just like paranoid about giving these things that once were used for my personal information. Like even if you wipe everything, it still just makes me nervous. My counter to that is anyone who really wants it can probably already get it just based on the things about you that exist online to begin with. Yeah, but I don't have to give them additional routes to it. This is true. This is true. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I would say most definitely not the asshole. Yeah, not the asshole. And frankly, I don't, no one's at fault here. This is very chill. Yeah, especially because, like, he doesn't specify whether they had an agreement in advance of how long it was going to take or anything. Mm hmm. Yeah, and also, this is just, like, I just want to take a second to push back against an attitude that I'm seeing all the time where it's like, oh, your friends should never ask you, like, you shouldn't ask your friends to help you move. You should never ask your friends for, like, a ride to the airport. There's this whole attitude I'm seeing now among, like, younger millennials and older Gen Z about how, like, your friends should never inconvenience you. No. Stop that. Do favors for your people all the time. And they should be doing that for you in return. If your friendships are always based on never inconveniencing anyone ever, are you really friends? Yeah, we've talked about this on the pod before. Like, that's, that's yeah, it's an attitude that I fucking hate. Yeah, that's the whole point of having strange, uh, having friends. What you're thinking of are strangers. Yeah, yeah. It's okay to ask friends to move until like <laughs> age thirty-five. Is that just because lifting things is hard? Or maybe there's an assumption that you'll have established yourself enough to forward movers. Also possible. I mean, 
if I was over 35 and someone asked me to help them move, I still would, but sure. Does that mean when I move? No, I we're know. old, it hurts. <laughs> I'm not quite there yet. <sighs> this was like, wait, I'm already, I'm already past that point, so I'm not allowed to ask anybody to help me move anymore. Well, I'm not over 35. Huh? I'm not over 35. You can ask me. Ah, okay. I was about to say, Chris, can you specify? <laughs> so I just have to make more friends younger than Yeah, myself. you just got to keep my... kicking it with people my age and younger. Yeah. And I got to get my uh, house moving army for when yeah. I eventually move out of this joint. Nice. Solid Just plan. me trawling around the high, local high schools. <laughs> hey, you're going to be under 35 for a while, friend. Or again, just find more people like me and let them strong arm you into friendship after they graduate. Exactly, right? I'll, yeah. I'll get my moving um, ban and just, yeah, I mean, I can, I can befriend other former students. What was it? I wanted to, I think. Oh. <laughs> or they're just really shy. Because frankly, there have been points where the other professors where I was like, I should stop bothering them. <laughs> but never with me. <laughs> no, you just, you have, this, you've got botherable DNA, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, or how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, either or. Uh, but that just reminded me of a TikTok that somebody sent me where it was like seniors to their favorite teacher. And it was like, wouldn't you ever want to hang out like socially? <sighs> okay. <laughs> and I think it would be really funny if we recreated that. Yeah, I like, I don't, I feel like it would be weird if I asked a student as they were graduating, like, hey, you want to hang out? Like, they'd be like, weirdo. So I yeah. never can do it unless the student themselves asks me. No, I do feel that, but I, I think we should recreate that. I think that'd be fucking hilarious. Because <laughs> that's exactly what it was. Do you ever want to hang out socially? <laughs> Although, Fine. this was also, like, in a very unique time. Yeah, the, I feel like the social contract had broken down quite a, quite a bit at yeah. the time. Because, you know, May 2020... Although, really, it started more in, like, April. That was a weird time for everybody. Well, yeah, because you were at my sad birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what so actually, I guess was? it was more even, like, March. Like, the end of March. 2020. The rules like, to apply weeks. as soon as shit got real weird. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't think that those, that particular circumstance under which we transitioned from teacher-student to friends, like, can be recreated. Hopefully. We can find ourselves in that situation again. Yeah, Jesus Christ. But also, I mean, I don't know. I probably would have kept annoying you, even if things had worked out more normally. <laughs> again, yeah. I've got clown blood, baby. I have the gene that encourages me to bother people constantly. <laughs> I am simply made to pester. Well, at least you know. <laughs> Anyway, this is kind of a wing it episode because I've been doing a lot of things. Yeah, unfortunately, Streamlabs was behaving for me this whole time up until now. Ooh, you hate to see it. At yeah. least you're still, I mean, knocking on wood here, at least you are still on the air. Yes. Uh, so, so we I... have that going for ourselves. I can't see you on Streamlabs, but I have the, the Twitch stream up over here, so I can see you on there. It's just, like, five seconds delayed. Sure, whatever. Um, I'm going to keep staring at my computer background over here as though I'm looking at you because this is what the game is. Sure. Let me just look over these to-do lists I have on my desktop. Nice. Oh, hello from the past. Yeah. There you go. It is. Very much like time travel. Oh, this is just like, this is podcast admin stuff that I've been meaning to bring up for like literal weeks now, but I keep forgetting. And the clown blooded me is the blood that has. 
There you go. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, this is podcast admin that I've had in the back of my head for uh, literal weeks now, but I keep forgetting to say it as soon as we're like done recording. So I'm saying it now. We all need to give each other like Twitch. Oh shit. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh trying to wow. Think. This is fun. I shouldn't have tried to think. I didn't think that was going to happen. But we all need to give each other like Twitch mod privileges. Mm -hmm. so that you can delete bullshit messages in our Twitch stream and I don't have to. <laughs> I, I, I watched it the one time. You did watch it, but you couldn't delete stuff and I was playing games and that was a problem. No, that was a different time. I, that was before I was able to actually log in. Remember because of our password confusion? Oh, yeah. And so able that, to but also... I should probably just do that with your personal Twitch if we ever wind up doing that. Like, needing that for any reason. Good luck with that. So that's a bit of housekeeping <laughs> about the running of a podcast that we're all... We're letting you in on a little behind-the-scenes peek here. It's not all glitz and glamour. Oh, it's so fascinating. This is good content. Crushing it. Um, I would like to imagine that just the way I am as a human might make boring things a little more fun, but also, like, should I really be giving myself that much credit? Who's to say? Not me, for sure. Anyway, uh, do would we like to transition into uh, the weekly worsening? We can. I don't know how we feel about how it... This is going to be a little... We're going to attempt... Sound, I don't know. That I'm not in charge of. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. Listen, you ball, you're only making it worse. Thanks, that even makes it worse. It's worse than you know. It usually is. I think that's the worst thing I've ever heard. That's the worst goodbye I've ever heard. And you stole it from a movie. How marvelous. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> You are without doubt the worst part I've ever heard of. Listen, you ball, you only That's a great way to kick that off. That even makes it worse. That's fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, all right, hold on, let me get rid of that. Uh, how are we? I like, one, I love the sad piano. Just excellent touch, because I think that does capture the vibe of it <laughs> very, very well. Um, how are we worse this week, besties? See, whenever I ask you that question and you don't answer immediately, but you give me a look, I get afraid. What have you done? Well, you remember what I said last week? Yeah, you got another fucking printer. If you got a fourth 3D printer, I'm shutting I off the episode right now. Well, just the three, but... um. Man, does a resin printer require so many more accessories and things. Oh my god. I, I'm i still just buying stuff for it. I Bruh. haven't even, like, printed a thing yet. Because now, um, I tried to yesterday. It failed for some reason. Um, but also, I have learned the hard way that the resin smell does not go away. I've had multiple air filters just going, going, going. And I can, it's so strong. The resin smell is so strong. That's why people but, have like sheds for this. Well, I can't do that. But you should have thought about that. I ordered an enclosure that has like a vent that is supposed to vent out the window. So then I had to buy a thing that goes in the window so I can vent out the window and keep, keep it closed and stuff. So by this time next week, that 3D, that resin printer is going to be behind me so it can vent out the window. <laughs> so Oh my god! Because I cannot take this smell. Uh, I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's healthy for me or the the cats or Harley. Yeah, I would assume it's not. Jesus so, Christ, girl. So yeah, I, I bought a new enclosure today, and yeah, that's what the curtains are about. Is that I need 100% blackout curtains, um, because the UV light coming through the window can cure the resin. Yeah, get a gas mask. I have a, a respirator over there. It's just that 
Um, and I certainly wear it when I'm like close to the resin, but here's the thing. The smell pervades the whole house. You can smell it everywhere. And I'm not going to wear the respirator 24 seven in my home. Well, yeah. But like right now, the smell has overwhelmed me. I turned off the air purifiers <laughs> for so that Nick doesn't lose his mind. Oh yeah, um, I turned off my fan. I'm hoping that's enough. <laughs> But it's like, yeah, the smell is so strong and uh, it's it's worse than I expected. And I tried to print once and it failed. And now I am so very, very sad that, uh, I'm so sorry. yeah, so I, I, I had to take a step back from it because I was so angry that I went through all this work because <sighs> that means that I need to now pour the resin out of the vat so that I can strain it. And then I'm going to have to clean the vat. And I, yeah, there's like a whole bunch of steps. It's not like with the FDM printers where I can just scrape yeah. it off the thing, throw it out and try again. So. Wow. Yeah. It's going to have to be behind me because it's, it's got to reach that window back there. Understandable. So, yeah. Yeah, that's been most of my week is, man, I got a, I got a real setup going over here. <laughs> I am terrified to eventually see this. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's going to change because the printer's got to move. And I won't be able to fit both the printer and the wash and cure station back there. So I don't know. I got to figure something out. But it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. It's so much more work and so many more accessories than my FDM printers. But you know what? When I have to commission a shit ton of cosplay pop props from you. And I, and I am learning that when I want to print things with resin, I'm going to like save up a bunch of things and do it all in one go. That way I can clean up after that and hopefully not have the resin smell everywhere. I don't know. But, oh yeah. yeah, that might be smart. Because right now I just leave the resin in the vat because cleaning it up is a huge pain in the ass. And, uh, but the cover isn't, uh, like airtight. Build an army of automaton thieves and it'll pay for itself. There you go. Yeah. I, I think my strategy now is to find the most ridiculous possible models that I can to print on it. Because I think those are the type that will sell. I like it. So, I like it. And I, I really got to get better at 3D modeling myself so I can make my own. Like, I can't find a model of Buff Kirby, so I'm going to have to design one. I swear I've seen people printing Buff Kirby. I mean, it's possible, but they might just not sell the model. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, then there's a project for you. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not near that level yet of being able to design that, but... Something to aspire to. I did design a sandcastle mold last week, so. Oh, oh wait, that's so cute. I love that. Yeah, for the, the tiny little sand tools that I gave my niece when I saw her last weekend. Aww. Yeah, is that's... that your, is that the main way that you're worse? Do you have anything really besides like that. that? That and those kind of casinos just rot my brain out. I love that for you. Um. The cosplay brain rot continues. I have everything for my sexy Mothman cosplay, which is, oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, these are probably going to be part of that. I am going to do a couple little just like things to just make it like fit like perfectly. Like, oh, I'm going to add a little elastic here, blah, blah, blah. Minor things like that just to have the finished product be as polished as possible. But, um, oh, my violence feed mask rebuild, I have been having such a great time because I actually know what I'm doing this time. And, like, I'm not, like, afraid of working with EVA foam and, like, contact cement like I was the first time. Like, oh, am I doing it wrong? Now I'm like, I know what I'm doing. I've got this. I have most of it painted. Really excited. And uh, I'm going to sell the old one at our table at Mid-Hudson. So if you would like a uh, an EVA foam violence fiend mask from Chainsaw Man, there will be one available for purchase. I'm not sure how much it's going to go for yet. Because I won't say the materials were insanely expensive, but it did take me a while. So still kind of figuring that out. And that's what a lot of it is. It's the labor more so than the parts. Yeah. So 
there's that it, it, just the cosplay stuff and uh again bought these mostly for fun i bought full blackout lenses again just to fucking scare people because of who i am as a person and that's really about it nice yeah we're down to what a week and a half ish yeah hard to believe i got a bin I'm full excited. of over there I printed even more roses. Oh, you can't see them because of my microphone. Because I, at my family reunion over the weekend, I put a bunch of uh, 3D printed stuff into our auction to raise money yes. for the next reunion. So you, so you told me. And man, those were some big ticket items. I printed a dragon. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me. Man, all of the kids wanted that dragon. There was this one girl. Oh. like She would be my first cousin once removed, my first cousin's kid. Um, but she wanted it so badly. She just kept going and asking people for more money <laughs> to like buy more tickets to put in for it and stuff. It was That's so, so cute. cute. She wanted it. So. Oh, yay. Yeah. So that was, that was very nice. But yeah, they were, they were all big fans. So I ended up putting more 3D printed stuff in it that I intended. So I had to replace it. Yeah, which I've already done. And then. Well, some. there you go. Yeah, that was. Hmm. Yeah, exciting times. Um, I think this is a thing that we're both going to be very worse uh, for tomorrow. Yeah. I am so ridiculously excited. Tomorrow, do not fucking miss it. Our Twitch stream is not going out from the Fighting With Friends Twitch channel. We are going just this one this week for this special. We are going out from the Big Dumb Monsters Twitch channel at 8. We are talking about hobgoblins. It is going to be a hot fucking mess. I'm so excited. It's going to be me, Arthur, Chris, and Kyle all at the BDM studio. Kyle is just going to be chiming in as he sees fit, if at all. Uh, Nick and Brooks, you guys are coming in remote. And we are all going to be talking about a ridiculous fucking movie. And drinking. <laughs> so it's always I'm interesting. so excited. It's always interesting when you like promo the next day's uh, Twitch because you've usually watched the thing and I haven't watched the thing. I have not watched it either. Oh, that's right. You did say that. But I just know. Just said that. I simply like the vibes. The vibes are speaking to me. Oh, yes. And we have other uh, stuff coming up on the network. Friday night, come back for the Big Dumb Monster Summer Camp Book Club. Uh, oh, perfect. There you go. This is our first or second full week of programming for the network, I do believe. Because Monday we had Big Dumb Monsters. Second. Okay, yeah. Monday we had Big Dumb Monsters. Uh, yesterday was Regrettable Reviews with myself and Arthur, which if you didn't catch... I say go watch that on uh, Big Dumb Monster Switch channel. I think we had a fun time. Arthur was very charitable towards me for having picked an artsy Soviet science fiction film. So thanks for that, buddy. Uh, yeah, I am not even mad at him for being spicy about it. And obviously here tonight, Wednesday, Fighting With Friends. Thursday, we've got a Fighting With Friends Twitch stream Friday. So we're doing good. We are doing good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, don't, I don't, you're not going to want to miss tomorrow is, is my, is my hot take that I'm going to, that I'm going to conclude with. I think tomorrow is yeah, going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah. Pre-game. Pre -game. That's everyone involved and everyone watching pre-game. Pre-game and game game. Yep. <laughs> and post-game. Yeah, probably. <laughs> All the games. Just All of the games, game. indeed. So... But I think that's it, unless you have anything further to announce. I don't think we do. Okay. Or nothing, like, particularly big in the works other than Mid-Hudson. Yeah, this is the last Thursday of July. Or what? Do we know what we're doing next month for the streams? No, actually, we don't. It just occurred to me earlier today, I was like, wait a minute, do we even talk about August yet? Would we like to game again? We can't take a little uh, little breather. Tampa Bay Comic Con. Oh, so if you're uh, that 
We are not involved in that one, but others will be. Tampa Bay, New York. Chris is hosting. Chris is hosting stuff. Hell yeah. So if you're in the area and you're a fan, go check that shit out. And stop. And Chris is also typing in the third person. <laughs> Don't break the illusion. <laughs> um since I'm just thinking about this now and we're live anyway, uh, would you want to try being the gamer? Because there are things that you play. That's true. Although I haven't had much time to actually... I haven't played on my PC in a while, actually. So that's a possibility. Or we could co-op some stuff. Yeah, it's possible. So in the chat, if anyone has any opinions on what they would like to see, please let us know. Uh, tweet at us email us. All of our contacts are in our link tree. Let us know. We would love suggestions if you want to see us playing something at the same time, or if you want to see the roles getting swapped a little bit, and Brooks being the person playing something while I just sort of spitball. We're down for anything. Yeah. We're we're simple women. Oh. Y'all know us. Chris is gonna do what Chris is gonna do. <laughs> fair enough. That's fair. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. I saw it. I was like, fair. Yep. All right. So all that being said, I think that's gonna, gonna bring us to a close for tonight. As always, thank you for fighting with us, friends. We appreciate each and every single one of you, and we'll be back again next week for the final episode before Mid-Hudson. <laughs> Exciting time. This week's episode of the Fighting with Friends podcast was hosted by Bridget Kelly and Dr. Sarah Brooks. You can find other episodes of the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, or your other favorite listening platform. Catch us live on Twitch every Wednesday and Thursday, and for ad-free live broadcasts of the show, you can subscribe to our Twitch channels, or consider donating to our Patreon for ad-free access to our entire library of past episodes and streams, as well as fun bonus content. Fighting with Friends is a member of the Big Dumb Monsters Podcast Network. Check out the links in the description for more episodes from us and from all of the shows on the network. Thanks for listening!